Hi, I'm Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Candid Conversation with Daryl Fitzgerald is a show where you will learn something new. It's a show for the courageous that wants to be engaged. A show where we discuss any issue that affects the lives of people. And a show where we take inventory of our lives decisions. Welcome to Candid Conversation with Daryl Fitzgerald. Welcome back to the show, Candid Conversations with Daryl. The show where we never sugarcoat, we ask the hard questions that our viewers want to hear. Last week's show, uh, we talked about relationships. And we talked about specifically keys to keeping a healthy relationship in a spousal relationship and in a boyfriend and girlfriend relationship. We had the unique vantage point of um, having a male on the guest. But this week we have a female guest and hopefully she'll be, she'll be able to provide some insight from a woman's perspective. Would you like to introduce yourself to our viewing audience? Hello, my name is Shavonda Lee Davis and I am a script writer and a television program producer well, I just want to thank you for coming on the show, The Truth Hurts, Siobhan Delise. And uh, in your opinion, what would be the major or a major characteristic that uh, you feel is good to keep a healthy relationship? I feel a major characteristic would be trust. I think that's pretty important. You can't have trust. a relationship without trust. Okay, and then what role do you feel trust uh, has in a relationship? Well, it plays so many parts. Um, a person can only open up to someone that they trust, so that would trust would lead to communication. Mm -hmm. so. so, what are what are some what are some um, kinds of trust you feel is important? in a uh, boyfriend and girlfriend or a spouse relationship? Like trust in the sense that uh, you feel comfortable with the person. I know you mentioned, you said opening up. Right. And um, feeling comfortable enough to, to open up or to okay. show yourself or to reveal yourself to the other person or possibly be able to show that person um, multiple sides of you. Exactly. So in that way, trust is important. That's right. Um, I would say trust is important as well in terms of communication as well because um, if you trust a person you feel comfortable communicating with that person I agree um, so a lot of times we think about trust trust is like one of those words that are multifaceted exactly um, I almost didn't say it because of that I felt it was too cliche yeah mm -hmm. when I think about trust too I think about um, loyalty and um, faithfulness whether it's you right. have the the trust to be able to uh, trust the other person in the relationship Right. Um, when I also think about trust, I think about the ability to trust the person with your feelings um, or with your emotions. So you said that. Uh, so, I, so trust to you is very important in a relationship. That's right. Um, what other things would you feel are important um, to having or keeping a successful and healthy relationship, Miss Davis? Well, um, I had a chance to look over your 20 keys, and I feel that they're all very important. Um, but trust being at the top, mm -hmm. and um, with trust comes confidence in that person um, that they will be trustworthy and keep your uh, confidence. Mm -hmm. Do you think that... Um when a, when a woman communicates about trust, do you feel it's uh, the same as when a man may discuss trust in a relationship? Or would you say it, it differs? Like maybe a, a, a woman's concerns or a female's concerns and her approach in a relationship dealing with that word trust may be uh, different from 
how a, how a, a, the, the male may um, well, feel I think about trust. that men and women have different definitions for pretty much all words. Mm -hmm. They mean different things to each mm -hmm. person. Um, what what are some characteristics that 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 you actually feel are beneficial? And let's say when you're in a relationship mm -hmm. um, with a man, what are some of the things that you you actually look to in the man that would indicate to you that you could have a holistic or healthy relationship with that man? Well. Um what I look for, or have looked for, <laughs> typically, would have been that the man feel comfortable with himself, that he knows himself, mm -hmm. um, that he's pretty mature. Mm -hmm. So you want a man that's confident. Right. You want a man that uh, has maturity. That's right. Now, how do you define maturity? when you look at a man? Um, well, I think that a man that is um, confident in his abilities, in his um, beliefs, um, needs very, he does need validation, but not as much as a man that would not be as confident in his abilities. So a mature man has confidence. Right. Okay. I hear a lot of women talk about relationships with men. And they say, um, you know, I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not a mother. I don't want to be this man's mother. Mm -hmm. um, do you, do you, do you have any ideas or can you elaborate a little bit what in your, in your view, what that might mean from a, from a woman's perspective that you don't want a man that looks to you as a mother? Hmm. <laughs> um, I would interpret that to mean that it would be a man that I'd have to look after and um, constantly oversee. So I would probably interpret that as a man who was not a leader. I'm sorry. That's right. how I see it. Well, this is <laughs> candid conversation. You know, you can you can communicate and say what you like to say, and how you how you feel most comfortable saying what you like to say on the show. Mm -hmm. um, Thank so you. So, a man who is a type of man who wants a, who wants a mother, right, would be the type of man that a woman would have to oversee a lot, right? Oversee in the sense of what to make sure what that his actions line up properly. Um, or responsibly. Or responsibly. Mm -hmm. What would you say is something that would be um, irresponsible or something that wouldn't be advantageous for uh, a characteristic that a man would have in the relationship? That Why would you have to overlook a man what, to make sure what? That he, um, that he has, uh, that he has uh, proper spending habits. Oh, spending. Mm-hmm. So that, that's important to you? Mm -hmm. Good financial management. That he has good finance. So not the type of person who would pretty much squanders or, or waste his money on uh, maybe things that are detrimental or frivolous. Right. And a man who doesn't prepare for future events or, or um, future mishaps, where, who doesn't have a reserve or it doesn't have the foresight to appreciate a reserve. Oh, that's interesting. So you would say that a, ma a mature man is one who has good stewardship over um, his finances. finances. Exactly. Right. So he, d he doesn't squander his money, doesn't right. squander his wealth. Right. He um, pretty much would take care of his business, make sure um, his necessities are uh, t cared for. Mm -hmm. um, and more specifically, um, in dealing with finances, right. how would you like a man to deal with you personally? dealing with finances because I mean a lot of times you deal with relationships you hear you hear songs and things that says you know no romance without finance you know you got to have a J-O-B <laughs> if you want to be with me that type of thing <laughs> so I, I would tend to think somewhere in the equation it would be you might have some considerations for 
the way the man deals with you as it relates to his money and his finances or how he would deal with the household or your mm -hmm. household. Right. You know, I mean, um, well, I, I believe until a couple is married, then each person's finance is their own <laughs> and to do with as they please. But as I said, if you notice before you marry someone that they don't have good financial stewardship, then that might be a red flag of something you might want to think about before you commingle your funds with someone that is irresponsible. So, how, so how do you assess if a man has um, good financial or fiscal responsibility? I mean, let's say, okay, you're you're dating, okay, you're you're courting a man, or mm -hmm. let's say you've been dating for a year. How how would you be able to tell, you know, if this man um, has good fiscal responsibility? Well, Daryl, I can't tell you all of that, but I could just tell you a few details. <laughs> you look yeah, surprised. We want to know. The viewing, the viewing audience wants to know. Oh, well, um, one thing I can tell you is that a first sign when you first meet someone and, and you're going out for coffee or maybe a dinner, lunch or something like that, you might want to observe how his actions when the bill is presented. Is it left in the middle of the table? Is it slid towards you or <laughs> does he readily grab it? That's like a first sign that would tell you whether or not he has financial responsibility. And then the second way you'd really find out is, does he pay for your date and does he pay with cash or a credit card? Because that would kind of indicate if he has a stable credit rating. Right. I hear you. I had talked to my mother and she was saying something to me and from a woman's perspective saying that there's th three things that she looks looks to, you know, does he have his own house mm -hmm. or apartment? Right. You know, so he's, you know, he's not living on the streets, obviously. He can right. pay for that. Uh, uh, does he have a J-O-B? Oh, okay. Wait, wait. Those things uh, are he given. Have, does he have I'm a, sorry. Does he, <laughs> those does are he have given. a car? <laughs> No, those you know those were things that um, well, my mother said that given. a lot of women they kind of look to determine whether or not a man you know is the right kind of man for them, or is is positioned financially to have something to offer a woman in in the relationship, you know. Because I mean, a man who can't pay a bill like mm -hmm. he, he he won't he won't be able to pay if he doesn't pay for the dinner or the lunch or he's not the kind of guy. An according that's going to be able to pay for your dinners or your lunch or breakfast and things like that. Well, I mean, let me just how, how can he how can he provide for the household, the home, making sure that that food is kept in the home? Before you accept a date, though, I think right. you should check all that out. I mean, you should know whether or not he has a car, he has a residence oh. before you even agree to a date. So right. I thought right. that was a given. I oh, thought okay. most most people knew that. So <laughs> uh, women do their research. Of course, they you wouldn't go research. out with a stranger. Would That's you? Good. Well, no, I don't. Well, w a lot of times when you meet a person, a person is a stranger. I mean, w you know, sometimes you don't. When you first interact with a person, uh -huh. you may just you may just have a conversation. It's usually an opening. Like you might be at a public event, you might be at a club, you might be at church, whatever. You know, sometimes you things begin just with a conversation. You may not have all the research done before you communicate with a person. So a lot of times when you, at least when I first meet people. I don't know everything about them. They're, they're almost like a, a stranger, but, but I get to know. Well, that's what the conversation's for. That's what we're going to be talking about while we're conversing. We're going to be finding out if we have similarities. Where do you work? Are you married? Are you single? Do you have children? So you should find all that out even before mm -hmm. going out with a person. You so should you, know where they live. Right. So you, 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 you ask all those um, hard questions. You do your... Uh, sort of like your your interview process. Oh, I do. Oh, you do. I'm a straightforward person. Yeah, well, that's smart. That makes a lot of sense. You know, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, Avoids problems in the end. Avoids problems in the end. Mm -hmm. Know, knowing as much as you you need to know up front will avoid um, problems in the end. Well, that's you know that's that's really good. You provided some some good insight as far as the role that um, financial security or financial responsibility has and the impact that it can have on a relationship and the success of a relationship. The word I'd use is responsibility. Security is not always a given, but responsibility can be controlled. Mm. 
Would you say that um, women look um, for men who can provide financial security? As I said, security is not always given. You know, that is um, subject to change through factors that we can't control. But responsibility is something we can always control. Because if you're faithful over a small amount, right. then I, pretty, I'm pretty sure I could trust you with a lot. Well, Sha Siobhan Delise, you've provided some really good uh, insights so far. We're going to uh, take a quick break right now. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you soon. At Hartford Public Schools, we care about one thing above all, the future of our kids. That's why we're dedicated to providing all students with the knowledge and skills needed in the new global culture. Hartford Public Schools is thriving. More student success stories, more world-class facilities, more university and corporate partnerships, more amazing talent coming and staying in Hartford. This is how education is supposed to work. Welcome to Hartford Public Schools, where the future is present. Uh, welcome back to Candid Conversations with Daryl. And we were having a really interesting conversation about the keys to keeping a healthy relationship, uh, primarily a boyfriend girlfriend relationship or a spouse relationship. And uh, we want to just continue our conversation with our guest, uh, Ms. Davis. Ms. Davis has been sharing some really wonderful things with us about um, relationship from a, a woman's perspective. Uh, Ms. Davis, uh, how, how do you feel about, um, a, do you feel it's very important between uh, a man and a woman to have commonality in a relationship? I feel that they need to have some commonalities, common goals, common beliefs. Common goals, common beliefs? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you feel as if uh, men and women should take interest in one another's um, interests? To a degree. To a degree? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, what role do you feel uh, freedom has in a, in a relationship, in the success of a relationship? Uh, personal freedom. Do you feel that personal freedom has an important role in, in keeping or maintaining a healthy relationship? Yes. Yeah. I, I see a lot of situations uh, often when I look at relationships where sometimes men, um, they can't accept uh, women's independence mm -hmm. and women's freedom. Or they can't um, respect uh, the fact that a, a woman can chart her own course for herself in her personal life. So, you know, she may, she may have certain aspirations or goals, uh, whether it be academic or, or career. Mm -hmm. And I, I often hear a lot of times that, you know, it's why it's so important to have, I think, people who are together who have common interests or uh, common mentality. Because oftentimes you might have a situation <laughs> where one person doesn't feel confident right. with the other individual. Because you may have one individual who's very um, ambitious. Mm -hmm. Let's say they, they have very distinct goals for themselves. or their careers uh, require a, a lot of um, time, you know, and um, focus. Right. And um, you may have another individual who cannot adjust to the fact that um, one individual is very focused on their goals and their career. I mean, have you ever seen uh, relationships where that's come into play where maybe, you know, one person is going in one direction, meaning they want to move upward and onward, and the other individual just wants to stay where they are, and that that may become a conflict in the relationship. Have you ever, have you seen that before, Ms. Mm -hmm. Davis? Yes, I have, unfortunately. Have you ever experienced that personally in a relationship? Well, to a degree. You know, first, I just guess I could say that no one likes change. <laughs> change is always hard until you change. And um, secondly, as a um, t television production, uh, uh, as a TV producer and a script writer, I um, meet a lot of people. And I am often out and about and um, without my companion. And uh, a lot of times I do feel left out. And before that, I had a pretty demanding sales career as a real estate agent. And I socialized a lot with my clients mm -hmm. and prospective clients and the mm -hmm. same while looking for 
cast and crew members for my television pilot. I meet a lot of people, sometimes attractive people too. So I could imagine <laughs> what type of insecurities a person would feel. But um, I know that if you feel confident in yourself, in your own abilities, mm -hmm. and who you are, you know, it could still sting a little to see your mate with someone that you find is a little more, who looks more suitable to their taste. But um, you just have to be confident in yourself because there's a reason why you're together. It's interesting. You said that you felt left out, that your, your career or your career goals made you feel like the person who was left out? No, I said m oh. my mate might have felt left out. But then oh, again, okay. I did as well. You brought up a good point there. I did as well because a lot of times I was working or out of town or traveling when I could have spent time with my family, friends, mate on special occasions. I missed because I was out of town or working. So interesting, you brought up a, a key that I never even consider in my 20 keys to keeping a healthy relationship is um, the effect, uh, the role that change has mm -hmm. and um, the ability of two people in a relationship to be able to adjust to the changes that are going on in, in his or her uh, life. Yes. And be and supportive of the changes as well. That I forgot to mention is an important key. I don't know if we discussed that earlier. That's really interesting. So mm -hmm. um, support. Uh, mm -hmm. People feeling like uh, th their other mate or partner is supportive of what they do, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I mean, the only way for a person to really be supportive is if they really understand the interests that you have, right? And 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 take interest in someone else's interest, right? And yeah, that I mean, that's, I don't I don't think that a, a person relationship can be supportive if they don't take interest in the other person's interests. Right, that's why I said to a degree. Mm -hmm. um, we should be able to converse about what interests me. We should be able to um, compare ideas, compare our day. But I don't expect you to want to do everything that I, I do. You probably wouldn't want to. You wouldn't enjoy it, or the other person wouldn't enjoy it. Right. Do you think that, um, you know, this, that one of my guests from my last show, he, he said that we're all green and growing. That was what he said to mm -hmm. the viewing audience. So I think that, like, as individuals, even in relationships, you know, we're always growing. That's right. You know, sometimes we're, we're setting our eyes upon um, new goals, uh, new interests. And so I think that the uh, adjustment is important, too. You know, if you mm. have a person in a relationship with you, they should be able to adjust to your growth. Right. And you should be able to adjust to their growth. And I see a lot of relationships where sometimes individuals can't adjust to each other's personal uh, growth. Right. And that kind of can cause a, a division, you know, in the, in the, in the relationship, you know. Um, I, I guess that goes back a little bit to what we were talking about with freedom, mm -hmm. you know, um, um, personal freedom. Uh, I remember I was in a, a, a wedding one time in Atlanta, and um, this, this man and woman was getting married. You know, it was actually on Peachtree Street in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> and um, the uh, pastor kept saying to, and he was really adjust, he was really addressing it to the the um, husband, the soon to be husband, to gr to the groom, mm -hmm. because this woman had really high expectations like she was on a route to get her like like doctorate degree she was like already she just received her master's degree and she was going for her doctorate degree okay. and you know she was very very focused she had a very supportive family very supportive family base and um, she just really knew what she wanted she knew what she wanted out of life and so the pastor kept <laughs> looking at the groom and his side of the family and kept saying that you you know you know, she, she, she has goals for herself. She really wants to accomplish these things and, you know, trying to let him know, you know, you really need to be supportive of her as she, as she embarks and as she maintains her course of action, her course of discipline in terms of reaching her, her academic goals, right. you know. So, I mean, this is kind of interesting sometimes where you find one person wants to go in one, one direction and the other person, let's say, 
they may not even have goals. You may have a certain person who may not be in a position where they want to grow or they, they want to aspire to higher heights, you yeah. know, or they're not setting any new, they're comfortable. Sometimes you may have a situation where a person is just comfortable, you know, and then I've seen situations where a person might be jealous of the other person mm -hmm. because they see that this other person has a career, a lifestyle that's dynamic, that they're in, you know uh, they're interacting with all different types of people, mm -hmm. interacting with successful people, and you know they're just comfortable where they are. I don't know if you I don't know if you've ever seen um, situations like that where people actually they kind of grow apart because one person is growing and and has very focused goals, and the other individual just wants to stay comfortable, stay where they are. They're not they're not aspiring to anything else. Well, I don't know if you've ever seen that before. Well, it's <coughs> funny that you mentioned that. Maybe that's why you asked me to be a guest. But um, it, it's, it's similar to my situation. Um, I had a very successful career in real estate for uh, 10 years. And um, I left that and decided to go back to school. And, go f um, and that's why I... <laughs> that's why we're here today. Because um, I went to to class for communications and broadcasting so it was like I totally changed my career but it wasn't a total change after I started training mm -hmm. because I saw that there was similarities and that I could transfer some of the skills that I had from there to here so I enjoyed going to college and I even considered going um, on further <laughs> and just being a professional student because I actually enjoy learning but I had a mate that um, has a stable career that they've been in for 30 years. They don't plan on changing. They love it. They don't want to do anything different. <laughs> and um, there's a, really no reason for him to change. So um, he has been supportive of me. So all that we're talking about today does quite fit my situation. He, he's been supportive of me and um, now my aspirations to pursue writing for television networks he's been very supportive of that as well he never once discouraged me That's or told great. me that I need to <laughs> get a regular nine to five or give up any of my dreams or any of that he just constantly asked me to do my best and I think that that's helped because it helped me excel in so many areas mm -hmm. you know and in school yeah you know um, I was at the top of my class and received many honors there and mm -hmm. out here professionally in the media world I am making my way and um, I think it's all due to the fact that I know I have a strong support system at home and that I'm just really out to pursue my dreams and whatever makes me happy is gonna make That's me happy. Mm -hmm. It also sounds like um, your, your, your mate or your partner is very stable mm -hmm. um, financially and um, that's certainly a, a plus, uh, you well, know, and, and, and a, a plus in a relationship. Well, he's a good steward, and he's a good steward over his money and his fund, his funds, right. which is which is even better. Mm -hmm. even, that's, that's that's very great. So, you you just you look like you're on you're on your way to just greater greater heights, you know, and um, coming from a, a a foundation that's um, that's strong, you know, um, you seem like you have a very strong foundation. To build upon and um, I have a supportive family as well very supportive family too. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting you you mentioned um, that you're you you involved in um, a video production television and video production right um, you know um, what are some of your goals in terms of you know, what what things you want to pursue in, in that in that realm I mean your relationships have empowered you mm-hmm gave you a stability and a strength that allow you to pursue your career goals right and uh, so where do you see yourself um, a, a year from now what are some of your goals that you have in um, video production a year from now I hope to have sold my the pilot I'm working on now that's my goal mm -hmm. definitely to have the first one sold mm -hmm. um, in a year and um, 
Excuse me, what was the second part of your question? Uh, what are your, uh, you know, future career goals? I mean, since you're coming from such a, you know, you, you have strong, stable relationships right. that empower you, mm -hmm. what are some of your career goals? Oh, uh, and after that, I just plan to continue doing that. And as I always do, strive for the best and hopefully reach heights in that field as I did in my previous careers. Mm -hmm. And um, why I would like to do that is because I'd like to provide for these family members that um, have supported me. And I, I don't just mean financially, I mean in a greater way. You know, I'd like to affect a real change in right. Um, right. my community and my family, which is, um, it's not about finance though. Real wealth has something to do with finance and maybe that's for another show. Right, uh, right. You know, we, we could talk about that another time, but um, I'd like to think forward mm -hmm. as far as my family and my future generations of my family. That's great. And yeah. provide for them. That's great. You well. have very focused, uh, lofty goals. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Shavandalise Davis, I just want to, you know, thank you for being a guest mm -hmm. on Candid Conversations with Daryl. Well, thank you for having me. I just want to communicate directly to the viewing audience and say, um, the relationships that you choose are very, very important and um, they can predict um, certain levels and have impact on your levels of success. So be very particular in, in um, how you deal with your relationships and, and how you evaluate your relationships because uh, they could very well shape your future. Uh, we just want to thank the viewing audience for being a part of uh, Candy Conversations with Daryl. Anyone who's interested in coming on the show can give me a call personally at 860-922-6983. Take care. God bless.